All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I pray y'all are having a wonderful, blessed weekend as we give the most high all the honor, glory, and all the praise and worship. My title says Easter Sunday or uh, Resurrection. Um, this is a video response back to you, Mr. Page. Um, great email and a major shout out to you um, about knowing the truth versus tradition and what you've been taught all your life. Um, now, I'm going to just say this off top. This video right here is going to make a lot of religious folks mad, a lot of Christians. But for those that want to know the truth, and I'm not doing this video to make anybody mad, but y'all that know me know when I teach, I have to teach the truth, not traditional men and what Big Mama and them said and been playing a part, you know, for years. Uh, so anybody that know me, brother, uh, you may be new to the page. But uh, I never teach people holidays. I teach the holy days. And I don't teach traditions of men. The Most High had holy days, and he never had holidays. I teach Passover and not Easter. So to answer your question off top um, about the resurrection or Easter Sunday, I don't even call it Easter Sunday. And I'll tell you why off top, because when he got up, he was already gone before Sunday. And if you can, if you can just look at the most highest timetable and not this old messed up satanic calendar that we had, you know, you will see the truth. If most people would study about Easter, sex goddesses and fertility gods, we can say where Easter come from. If they just knew the truth, I believe that a lot of them wouldn't even play a part of Easter no more. But then some of them may hear the truth and still play a part of it because it's tradition and what's been going on where my mama and them did it. They mama did it. Our daddy did it. They daddy did it. It's a lot of people rather put tradition over the truth. They would rather they would rather put tradition over the most highs holy days, you know. And that's sad that people know more about Easter but don't have a clue about the Passover, you know. But they claim to be followers. <laughs> I'm just man, I'm just being real. Uh, when you think about it, it's sad the way you know, most people are operating when you when you tell them the truth, they get attitude that you know get attitude with you and don't want to um speak to you no more. But there is no way in hell I will place our savior on some paganism stuff. On a on putting him with with the stuff that this world does. That should be a violation off top, you know. See, we are told to be set apart. But instead of being set apart, most people want to play a part. And then you look at the resurrection. If they, they so-called what they call it, the, this world's way, it get moved on the calendar how many times? See, one thing about a holy day, you can't move a holy day. Nobody can touch the Most High holy day. Once the Most High said holy days, the things that they celebrate in the Bible, it never was moved. That's why you can't put our Savior on an Easter Sunday. But... Hey, especially in Baptist churches, you finna you finna hear a whole lot of hooping and hollering and, and the organ player jumping keys and that famous old Baptist sermon. He went down Friday and got up early Sunday morning. Didn't he do it? You finna hear that. You finna hear that. You know you are. But um for some people, Easter Sunday is about high necks, putting on fancy clothes, buying new suits. You know, giving a child Easter speeches, you know, cooking in the back, you know, coloring the eggs, you name it. But biblically speaking, not JT's opinion, not what I think, but biblically speaking, the resurrection of our Savior had nothing to do with Easter, nor Sunday morning. So you're not going to find it in the Bible. He didn't rise up early Sunday morning, according to the Bible. He didn't even go down Friday, according to the Bible. I'm just teaching the truth, y'all. That's why when they went looking for him in the tomb, he was already gone. That's why you have to understand the Most High's timetable. The ancient Roman Catholic Church started mixing the celebration of our Savior's resurrection with, celebrate, with celebrations that were involved with fertility rituals. That, that was a that's something you never supposed to do. The Bible makes it very clear that 
I say he was resurrected on the first day of the week. Now here's the problem with that. You got this this calendar that we have. You see what I'm saying? So what is the first day of the week? According to this word. See? But according to the most high timetable, what day is it? Yeah. See, that's the confusion right there. The calendar that we have. And then here's the other confusion. Most of us are not taught about the high Sabbath. See, there was more than one Sabbath. When you talk about the high Sabbath, which most churches I know don't even teach, then you'll see the difference. That's why I'm, I'm like, how can you teach Easter, but you don't teach Passover? Why would you put an Easter sermon in front of what was really important, Passover? See, Satan has his calendar. I did a video about this years ago about this is Satan's calendar. Most of us don't have a clue on the most high timetable because we've been programmed to fit this world system, this calendar, these lies that so many people are going to keep teaching. I grew up on all lies. I did, I did y'all. And seeing right before Easter, what you always see? Lent season. What is that? Did, did our Savior come up with that? Did he observe that? No. And I always like to tell people, if if our Savior didn't observe it, if he didn't create it, why are we even playing a part of it? See what I'm saying? If we claim to be followers, why are we following things that this world love? When he say, you, 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 we are in this world, but not of this world. But most of us look like we in it and of it. You can't tell the difference now when you're looking at so many people who claim to be followers versus this world. But I know who's going to do the separating. You know, so this video is not going to sit well with too many people because this so so called Easter stuff is coming up. You know, I was just telling my cousin last night, don't believe that that lie <laughs> about Easter Sunday. She, we, we were probably about to get into a conversation about that, but you know, we, we just left it alone. You know, we just kind of laughed at each other. But the thing is, do you know truth or do you know tradition? That's why I ain't no way I would even call it a Resurrection Sunday. I'm just teaching here, y'all. He, well, JT, why would you say something like that? Well, i tell you why. Let me tell you something. Y'all heard me quote this scripture a whole lot. And P.P. Jones, I know if you're looking at this video, which I know you are, you already know I'm about, I'm about to go back to Genesis 1 and 5. I pray that most people will understand Genesis 1 and 5. If you was anything like me in the past, I read over this scripture a million times and still didn't catch it. But Genesis 1 and 5, it says that, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was the first day. Not the morning and the evening like this word shows us. But the evening and the morning was the first day. See, right there, he don't count 12 o'clock midnight. See, that mess most people up when you understand it. Because they go to show you how this calendar is so far away from the most high time. And the evening and the morning was the first day. So there is no way from Friday to Sunday, according to the most high, that you can get a resurrection according to the Most High's time. He wasn't crucified on Friday and he wasn't resurrected on Sunday. There is no way you can fit three days and three nights between a Friday afternoon crucifixion and the Easter Sunday morning sun sunrise. Once again, that's why when who was that Mary Magdalene, whoever when they went looking for him, he was already gone. See what I'm saying? How long did our Savior say he was going to be in the grave? He said it was for as Jonah was. Three days and three nights in the belly of the well. So will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. But 
That's not the way we look at time. Now, if you teach tradition, you're going to get an Easter sermon. You're going to get he got up early Sunday morning. But if you teach not tradition, but the true, the true word, the true gospel, you're going to get them rising up before Sunday morning. See, that timing cannot be right. Easter Sunday, yeah, it's going to be right, according to Satan's calendar. You see what I'm saying? Tradition. Then what you call it, Good Friday. <laughs> From Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is one night and one day. Saturday night to Sunday daybreak is another night. Giving you what, two days and one day. I mean, two nights and one day. You see what I'm saying? So where did you get another night and two days to equal to three days and three nights that our Savior said he would be in the tomb? See, a lot of people think I'm trying to argue. No. A debate? No. It's not even up for it's not even up for a debate. I don't care enough for debating and arguing. I'm just teaching what the word says. And then I'm gonna back this up with um John 20 and 1. Because John tells us that on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early. But here's the key word. While it was dark, it was still dark. And saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. It was still dark. John tells us it was still dark when Mary went to the tomb on Sunday morning and found it empty. That means that our Savior was already resurrected well before daybreak. He wasn't in a tomb any of the daylight portion of Sunday. See, when you learn this, the most high doesn't begin and end days at midnight like we do. See, you can try to argue with this all day long, but it's in the book. It's in the word. Matter of fact, when you go back to the Passover, uh, the Passover meal was eaten on Tuesday night. And Wednesday, Sunday, I mark the beginning of the high day. That's why when you study about the high Sabbath, it'll totally knock this teaching about Easter out. The first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. See, when you study and get the right timetable, you're going to see Wednesday. You're going to see a Wednesday, not Friday. Wednesday, just before an annual Sabbath begins. I ain't talking about the weekly Sabbath, but the annual Sabbath. You see what I'm saying? Just before that began, not the weekly Sabbath, Jesus was crucified and entombed on a Wednesday. That's why we have to teach the different Sabbaths and don't get them confused with each other. But once again, most of not even talk about the high Sabbath. So it's impossible to try to fit three days and three nights between a late Friday burial and a Sunday morning resurrection. That's why Good Friday, I care nothing about teaching. Easter Sunday, I care nothing about teaching. That's tradition. What did the Most High tell us? The traditions of men makes the word of God void. That's why when you teach tradition, there is no way you can teach teach Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, help us. There is no way you can teach tradition and then try to teach the truth. It's not going to match. It never had. That's why so many lies out there, because Satan is the father of lies. You know? But I'll close with this, y'all, because my I got to get out of here. But um, most men that I know, if they haven't already went and got it, they're about to go buy a new Easter suit. They call it Easter suit. I got to get suited and booty, man. I got to I gotta get my Easter suit. Most women I know about to get their hair on. It's a lot of money about to be made right now. I already have been. Got to get my hair done. I got to get me a new dress. I got to get my children some clothes. They got to get ready to get their Easter speeches together. I got to go buy some more eggs. We about to color eggs. We about to have an Easter egg hunt. They going to be cooking in the back. The preacher about to get ready to hoop and holler and use that same old saying he went down early Friday and got up early Sunday morning. <laughs> then he do it while the organ player bagging them up, making them jump two or three keys. 
But with that being said, after what I just talked to you right there, how much of that that they're getting ready to do is true? How much of that is true? See, I just killed a lot of people's spirit with that. But how long will these lies keep being told? How long will the children continue to hear lies? And you know why the children ain't going to be able to do better? Because the grown people are not doing better. We're going to continue to spread lies about Easter, Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, you name it, Good Friday, you name it, any holiday. We're going to continue to lie. But we are always talking about we need to tell the truth. Most people don't want to hear the truth. See, the truth will make you free. It will make. Notice how to say set. It will make you free. And the truth will make you go against everything you was taught growing up. Because it's the truth, not tradition. It will make your kin folks mad. And they will even look at you crazy like, why you don't play a part of this no more? Don't you know when, when you study about Easter, these sections, these, 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 these goddesses, these, they was having all kind of orgies, exchanging each other's wives. Man, when you study it, it's deep. I just want to leave you with that. Study about what really went on, about the, the orgasms and the sex and, it, and what they really did. And then ask yourself when you get through studying, why do they want to put our Savior on a day like this? I'll leave you with that. Have a blessed day.